afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Edible Garden Outdoor Kitchen Chef Demonstration presented by Scanna Energy. Before we get started, I want to thank the Cook's Warehouse for all the tools and supplies that they've donated for us to use here in the garden. My name is Christina Curry, and I'm one of the garden chefs working here. And what we try to do every weekend is present something um, that is easy to prepare, that's seasonal and fresh. And we typically try to use things that are as local as from our garden right here. But we've recently changed out uh, the vegetables in our garden. So for today, you know, I had to look outside of the garden, but we're still using things that are in season and something that's local to Georgia and something that's really fresh. So what I'm going to be preparing for you today is an arugula and muscadine salad. It also um, uses a little bit of Fuji apple and it's finished with a pear vinaigrette. So it's a really simple recipe and it's just you know, kind of a lot of knife work, but it's really, really simple. So I'm going to get started. Um, of course, I have my arugula here, which was already cleaned, and uh, you don't really need to pick through it too much. Um, if you buy arugula from the grocery store, obviously they've already picked through it. You just want to make sure that you kind of uh, rinse it off yourself and let it dry. And if you buy the bunched arugula, like from the farmer's market or something, it's going to be a little bit more work for you. But this is, this is really simple, so... I'm just going to put some in a bowl and just kind of, um, you know, set it aside because that's it with that. Um, the next thing is our muscadines. Um, if you're not familiar with muscadines, they are local to the southeast United States, so they grow um, locally here in Georgia, so you'll have access to something that's local and fresh, and you'll still be supporting your local community of farmers. And Muscadines are similar to grapes, they're just a little bit bigger, a little bit more sour. Um, sometimes people like to just eat the flesh and not the skin for this recipe. Um, you can cut the muscadines in half, but I've quartered them just because we're going to be tasting and I want everybody to be able to sample a piece of the muscadine. But basically, I just cut them in half, and like I said, I, I quartered them for this. And then you just take the seeds out. Um, if you're not a big fan of the skin, because it can be a little bit tough, if you kind of um, you can look at the way the flesh is on it, if you kind of just push it, the flesh comes right out. So if you don't want to eat the skin. But one thing why I've decided to use the skin in the recipe today is there's a lot of uh, nutrients that are in the skin. And that's actually where a lot of you know, the value of eating the muscadine itself. So I really don't want to get rid of that, but it has a lot of fiber, a lot of um, antioxidants to help you um, just be a little bit healthier. So we just cut them, quarter, and then we just put them in our bowl, and then we're just going to set it aside because we're going to mix it along with our salad when we get finished. So the next thing I want to get started on is our vinaigrette for this. So this is a pretty basic vinaigrette. I'm using uh, just some shallots, a little bit of pear infused vinegar, um, Dijon mustard, olive oil, and that's it. Um, this is really simple. I'm using a shallot. If you're not that familiar with shallots, it's like if onion and garlic were to have a baby. Um, a shallot is a lot stronger in flavor than, let's say, an onion, but it's not as strong as garlic. So it's a great substitute if, you know, recipe calls for garlic, you don't have it, you can do shallot or if you don't have the amount of onions. But shallots have a really nice mild flavor, especially when you just sweat them with a little bit of butter or some olive oil, let them cook low and slow, or even uh, caramelized shallots. Introducing those into recipes is a really nice element of flavor. And again, I'm just cutting this, and I'm taking a lot of care because I don't want to end up just you know, slicing it across my board like crazy. When you have any of the aromatic vegetables like your onions, garlic, and shallots, things of this nature, we don't want to do a lot of chopping because every stroke of the knife is taking flavor out of it and it's just breaking it down. So if you take a little bit of time and you just make sure that everything's cut nice and then we just cut across, we're going to be doing two cuts and then that's it. So we're not messing with our shallots too much. So... I just want to cut across. And since I just kind of want to dice nice and small, you can see it's a little bit more work. I mean, you may have to pay a little bit more attention, but it's definitely worth it because we want to maintain the flavor. So I'm going to put the shallots in. And then next up 
is our Dijon mustard. This is not supposed to be like a Dijon flavored vinaigrette, but in all vinaigrettes that you're making, it's nice to have a little bit of Dijon mustard to help emulsify it. As we all know, oil and water or oil and liquids, they don't want to stay together, they want to separate. So when we're making a dish like a vinaigrette, we really want them to stay together and be a nice uniform liquid. So the way that you can do that um, naturally is by using a little bit of mustard or even a little bit of honey, but something that helps emulsify it. You know, certainly in commercial food production, they do this all the time, except for they use chemicals to do this. But it's something that you can do at home naturally. You don't have to have any um, fancy or, or chemicals that you can't even pronounce to try to make something emulsify. So now for our vinegar. I'm using a pear infused vinegar, and again, I'm just trying to keep with what's in season right now. You know, I'm already working with muscadines. I have arugula, um, and I'm going to show you a little bit the apples that go in this recipe. So the pears, it just keeps in line with, you know, everything that's in season. So I'm just going to have a couple tablespoons of the pear infused vinegar. And you could certainly substitute another kind of vinegar if you don't like the pear vinegar, or if there's another uh, fruit infused vinegar, or balsamic, anything that you like. For this recipe. And then I just mix this. So now we're going to add our olive oil. And it's always, you know, a good eyeing is a three to one ratio, but by all means, you don't have to stick to that. If you like something more tangy, then use less olive oil. If you don't like it as tangy, add, you know, more olive oil. And also, you know, even that addition of something sweet like an agave or a honey or something to um, balance out the acid. But the one thing to keep in mind, we always want to start adding our oil really slowly. Because if you try to add it too fast, it's just going to overwhelm the liquid liquid, and you won't be able to get it to incorporate smoothly. And this is the same rule, even if you're using a food processor or blender, you want to start off really, really slow. And then you can kind of add it faster as you start to whisk. But since I use about two tablespoons of vinegar, I'm going to shoot for about six tablespoons of olive oil. I'm just going to keep whisking it. But again, you could definitely, you know, use a blender at home. It'll go a lot faster for you. So I'm going to set this aside. And I want to show you the apple. I'm using some julienne apple in this recipe. This is a great dish. It could be, a, you know, a full-on salad, or it's also something that you could chop up even smaller and use it as kind of like a garnish for any type of a sandwich. Like for example, if you're eating a chicken salad or a tuna salad, or if you had just um, a nice turkey sandwich, you could chop this whole salad up smaller and instead of using your lettuce and tomato, put a little bit of this. It's a, just another way that you can um, you know, incorporate this salad. So for the julienne, I'm using a Japanese mandolin. And obviously, you know, it saves time. And I don't want to stand here chopping it up. But if you have a regular mandolin, you could certainly use that. Um, I enjoy the Japanese mandolin just because, one, they work really well and they're very inexpensive. So if you break it, you can just go buy another one. It's about 20 bucks. As compared to the fancy stainless steel one, it's like $100. So I like these. But I'm just taking my Fuji apple and I've got the julienne blade on here. And I'm just going to julienne it. So it gives you nice, perfect pieces. You see, it doesn't take a lot of time. So I'm going to mix that in with my arugula here. Got our apples. And then I'm going to put some of our muscadines in here. Now, you could definitely season your vinaigrette if you want to. I'm going to dress everything and then season it because I really want to be able to control everything that I'm doing with this recipe. So sometimes when you you kind of mix it um, with the salt, if it's too salty, then you have to like try to add and balance and do things to make it taste good. So this is just a little bit simpler way to, to do that. And it's just kind of like tossing it together gently. And then I'm going to take, and I always like to use my hands. I mean, I I find it really difficult to use tongs. You know, people use tongs, but I always like to get in with my hands when I'm doing anything, you know, in the kitchen, so. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of pepper. So there, and then just 
we mix it up again. Just put a little bit on our plate. Put some of our muscadines right around it. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Well, of course, we would like everyone to taste what we prepared here today. Um, we're going to get samples together for you. Uh, all of our cups are compostable that we use here, so we have a special trash that we'd like to collect them in. Um, the recipes for this and any of the other recipes that we've done in our Garden Chef series this whole summer are available on the Atlanta Botanical Gardens website. And if that's it, I really want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you so much for your time and 